Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. Wanted to show you what I'm up to in the shop today. Finally uh, got the Romans ready to base. And we are going to be using this material. I've shown it to you before on previous videos. It's really good stuff. Buy it by the sheet here in the US. Uh, Home Depot. You buy it by a sheet, it's two feet by four feet sheets. And uh, right now I'm using a a jigsaw to cut this and just make try to make really straight cuts. But I plan on picking up a small uh, hobby table saw where I can just run this stuff through with a guide and just cut it into strips. Um, I'll give you the, the uh, measurements on this here. It is... Da -da 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 -da. So it's 125 millimeters long, and it is 50 millimeters wide. Uh, so this is what we're going to end up with. I've shown this before. This is a multi-basing for my Roman Legion uh, block of tin, and we're going to do that here. I'm not going to show you the entire process, but wanted you guys to get an idea of what what I'm doing with my ancients. Um, so this is our finished product. It's a uh, you know, tabletop standard. I think they turn out pretty well. Uh, dry brushed them with a little chain mail, which uh, basically you could use silver just to highlight the, the tips of the armor a little bit. Uh, then you got guys with swords. We've got seven of these with this batch. So uh, yeah, you might like those. I definitely like building the Romans and painting the Romans. <clears throat> but what I like to do, guys, is I'll start with my uh, bobsmith. Okay, we're going to use bobsmith, which is super glue for all you guys that don't know. Then I use, I like to use the wood glue. It's PVA. It's got a colorant in it. It's a little thicker than Elmer's glue, which I like because it's easier to work with. Um, and I use the dropper bottle so I can get it where I want it. This is what we'll be using once we ad adhere the uh, troops onto the base. And then I'll come in with this, and then uh, my flocking material. Just keep it a big uh, Ziploc container. This is Ziploc. Uh, so I got several different types of grass mixed together and some stones. Uh, so it gives it a nice, uh, a nice finish. Uh, and again, I'll show you how the basing showed up on this. And you can see how nice it is. Looks very greasy. <clears throat> so that's basically what I'm doing today. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the Bob Smith. So this is what I'm. What I like to do is um, I'm gonna be working like on composition, you know. So I gotta think this through a little bit. I was kind of thinking about doing one block of um, oh, and I forget the name of phylum. I think it's called a pylum. Uh, this is the, the javelin spear, as it were. You throw at the enemy, let's say it glances off a shield or whatever. Uh, this is designed, this uh, shaft here is designed to break, or not break, I'm sorry, bend. So the enemy can't pick your weapon up and throw it back at you or use it against you. Um, and then after the battle you collect them and they get straightened out again, I guess, and they can get reused. So I'm probably going to separate out the the guys with the swords. Uh, remember that after they threw their spears, um, then they would move in. Now this is a unique guy. I think he was uh, obviously a auxiliary Roman troop that got folded into the regulars. He's got a different helmet. He's kind of got like a different look to him. Uh, Pretty cool. I like this guy. Just one in the whole box so far. So, well, we, so far this is the last of the Romans. So in this kit, you get 30 Romans. So I'll have three blocks of Romans, and I have 60 Celts, six blocks of Celts, um, and then you also get the the scorpion. But I am going to be looking to get catapults, things like that, siege engines. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to separate out the guys with the swords. Right? 
And then you've got like standing dudes, you know, they're just like standing, right? So we kind of want to create like a little mini diorama. So this is kind of what my process is. I'll take my standing guys that are kind of standing static and see how many of those we have. And then, see like this guy isn't, he's kind of in motion just a little bit, but he's still kind of standing at attention as it were. So I got six of those. And then you've got these guys. I got a bunch of these guys that are like throwing their spears. So I got, see, looks like seven of those guys. <clears throat> so this is kind of how I work it. I do this a lot too with uh, ranked troops. You know, obviously you've got guys standing and the guys kneeling. You kind of know how to set those up. But with ancients, this is kind of how I've been rolling with it. So I kind of think. Um, the way to do this would be to, I could do like, so I need 10 guys, so I do like um, these guys standing, three, four, five, and then these guys in the back throwing, right, like they're shielding these other guys. So that would be one stand. And then um, I can take these guys, and I'm not sure how I'm going to line them up. Three, four, five. And think about this for a second. Now this is part of the creative process, guys. That's why this is part artwork. Not only is it the the building, the prepping, you know, getting them to this point where you're ready to even do a base coat. You know, this takes time right here. Uh, and deciding what poses you're going to do, you know, what heads you're going to use. That's all your creative choices. Um, and then coming down to this with the painting, with the shading. You know, it's all this this step-by-step -step process, and now we're in the final process where I am going to, um, I think I'm going to put the standing guy and the, the guys throwing the spears, I'm going to put them in the back row, like thus, and then that's kind of how I'll do it. So I'll take this guy, and I need to free up these, uh, these caps for some more Celts. i got to build some more Celts today. It's still early, a nice lazy Sunday afternoon here in the shop. So I'll go ahead and pull these guys off. And then this first row. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stage them. Because um, now I'm looking at their individual pose. You know, the look they have. Um, you know, just shifting them this way or shifting them that way or getting that, you know. <clears throat> Again, you're going through that the theatrical uh, effect here that kind of will make your um, each stand its own little t small diorama that has your own per personal artistic flair, right? Now here's this guy that's got the different helmet stuff. I think I'm going to actually position him in the middle, kind of like he was a little bit higher rank, you know, he's from... Maybe he was a Carthaginian that they... Eh, probably not, because they were to cut his head off or burn him alive. They hated those guys. I don't know, maybe he was a Gaul that they fought, and then maybe he came over to their side kind of thing, and they respected him, so they kind of let him fight in the Legion. So you can always do, like, little storylines like that. You can also do, like, small rocks. Some people do, like, little mini, like, palm trees or some sort of a flora. I've got, I'll show you some of the stuff that I've got here to use. I've got a whole variety of like different types of flowers. I can break them up into smaller bits so they're not big blobs. And I'll typically come in uh, with maybe even like grass clumps, things like that to kind of just accent. Um, I'll show you some of the grass clumps that I've got here. I've got, you know, gobs and gobs of these laying around so we can certainly do that you know here's like little trees 
you know, you can grab like little trees. You can get smaller ones than this if you want to make them look like little saplings. You know, sky's the limits. There's grass. You can do tall grass, short grass, clumps of grass, um, all different kinds of things. So now we're going to work on arranging these guys so that I don't like to have their shields overlapping, going over the, you know what I'm saying? So when I transport these in a future date with my transport bag, and I'm going to use the Magna Rack system, my battle phone. So eventually I will um, affix, I'll end up cutting, um, you know, magnetic uh, pieces and gluing on the bottoms of these if I decide to take these. So I have that option, but I still want my my shields, my swords, my spears not to be overhanging past the, the base. I'm going to keep everybody inside nice and tight, nice and organized so that when if, if I do want to transport these some days, I can magnetize them, put them in the magna rack, and they'll rank up really nice and neat. Okay. Now I'll take out our second row. And this is where it can get tricky. And see, so you got these guys with the spears going back like this, but I may have to shift them around a little bit. I don't know, I might have to stagger them, like alternate them. So this is part of the process. I personally don't just like to slap them on. You know, I like to plan it out a little bit. Um, but again, you know, this is all personal, you know, personal choice. There's no one way, right way, or wrong way to do it, I guess. This is just me trying to pass on what I do. Maybe you get something out of it, maybe you don't. Um, so yeah, Celts, then, um, you know, Celts are going to be a process, I got 60 of those guys to paint, it's going to take a little bit of time. Kind of thinking about uh, after this project, I do have some more uh, British Cavalry 28 mil for Napoleonics, I haven't decided whether I'm going to build those yet, um, I really haven't decided, or I'm going to start purchasing my American 15 mil American War of Independence guys. Um, so I'm, I'm leaning towards going towards the American War of Independence um, and building an, arm, uh, an American army and then a, a nice beautiful British army. And then after that, I don't know, we'll see. I've got tons and tons. I might go some, uh, no, I might go and get that by this winter I got a lot of other projects doing. We're actually going to be starting the construction of the office once I refinish the floor in here. I'm putting the same flooring in the office this winter and then I'm going to stick with that same um, flooring throughout. We're getting it from Costco. It's a waterproof material. Now we did, now I'll tell you guys this, if you're planning on refinishing your basement soon, do not use a laminate. Uh, I used a laminate in here um, it was once I had it in a buddy of mine came over he's an electrician to do the, the wiring and he said that is that a laminate and I said yeah I said never put laminate in the basement dude and I said oh well it's too late it's in you know and it's supposed to be water resistant he goes yeah yeah well we had an issue with our backup sump system which is water fed uh, sump system um, it wasn't plumbed properly let's put it that way we lost our power our backup uh, water fed pump system um, if you guys know how that operates for every gallon that goes through the the the, uh, the spinner the pump um, it pumps three gallons of water out uh, so it uses your, your city water <coughs> so you don't have to rely on a backup battery system or anything but we lost power it was it was storming like crazy it was pouring so obviously I've got a big huge uh, Zoller pump and my sump, uh, you know, big dog, because um, we're in a high water table area, but we're, we're near a, a, a major river here in Ohio called the Olentangy. And uh, so we're deemed a high water table area. So we put in a really big pump when we, when we got the house. And uh, about every two years, I would just replace that pump. I just replace it. And I did a water fed system as a backup. Uh, it's supposed to be foolproof. It, it just, uh, your, your water bill is going to be a little higher, but your basement won't flood, right? So, uh, had it plumbed, it wasn't plumbed properly with the um, one-way valves. And what happened was that water pressure caused the valve to fail and come back and actually was pumping water into the sump instead of 
running the, all the water out uh, of the house. So I got up in the middle of the night to check. I come down here and it's like two inches of water all over the bottom of the basement, you know, across the entire basement floor. Um, so, yeah, so needless to say, when you do a system like that, you literally use double check valves and then another check valve. So I could, that whole system was totally re-engineered re after that day. But uh, we, we, it didn't really have any problems, but it weakened the laminate material. And as we roll our chairs around in the office, it has started to flake on the very, very top layer uh, here and there where the seams are. And uh, so I'll be, that's the backstory on that. So I have to rip that floor out this winter, take all the office furniture out, uh, set us up a temporary office desk somewhere out here while I redo the floor, then move it all back in. Then all this stuff, those bins and things I've shown you guys in other videos, all those bins are gonna go out to my barn. I have a 2,500 square foot um, building for my business. Um, with a concrete, nice concrete floor. Um, those will be stacked on skids and kept out there and a lot of other stuff's gonna come out. We're gonna give some more stuff to Goodwill. Uh, both the kids will be off at college uh, by the end of August, so uh, middle of August actually. Um, and I can start uh, looking at doing the framing and starting to get the framing started for the office or for the, uh, the Ultimate Gamers Den. Um, so that's the plan. That's the plan. We're going to get it started. I'm going to slowly work on it through next summer. It'll be a project when I get done and get out of the heat. I'll come home, pop a shower, come down here, work on it some, work on it some. So there's going to be some changes down here. I'll, I'm probably going to start in this area. So this entire area is going to get shifted over to my cubby. And the gaming table is going to get shifted over to here temporarily. So it'll be kind of like a rolling, shifting thing as I slowly snake my way around the shop doing the framing first I would say that's step one <clears throat> so that's the plan that's where we're going with this and then uh, the, the the ultimate plan is once I get this finished you know our lighting done the flooring done electrical etc we are going to start a gaming club here at my home I have two nice driveways I'm out of the country where it's quiet um, so uh, we're definitely set up to do that. So uh, look forward to the future, guys. We got a lot of stuff coming. Now, as usual, old crazy German gets sidetracked. <laughs> so it's the southerner in me. I'm originally from Winchester, Kentucky. Okay, I can't help it. So let's, uh, let's at least get these guys glued down. And I'm gonna show you back to my process because what we got going on here now, is see we got a couple spear throwers. Their spears are hanging over the edge just a little bit too much, so I'm gonna need to just you can make make it look. I'm making it look like uh, I don't know how well you can see this. Not these guys falling, but you can kind of see how they're kind of like gonna stand off to the side while he comes up and throws. And these guys come up and they do that thrusting, that upper thrusting move that they're taught. And that's what I was doing earlier today while I was doing some more painting was uh, I had some documentaries in about the Roman army and some of their tactics and techniques, right? Pretty interesting stuff. And that's what's the other thing I, I'll get into real quick here is, is these different eras, right? If you're, especially if you're new getting into this. So you got ancient, you got like black powder weapons, you've got World War One, World War Two, um, you know, all the way back these different eras all have different types of tactics that they use and different uh, maneuvers and the way that they do things. It's That's part of this whole thing. It's one of the beauties of this hobby is uh, learning. So we will get these guys organized here. So you don't have to have them perfectly ranked up. Like what I'm, what's starting to happen here, guys, is you can see it's kind of like a fluid movement here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get these guys glued down, and then I'll bring you back for the rest of the basing. <clears throat> so yeah, so I've got, uh, this group is still loose, and this one's, you know, well this uh, Bob Smith 
adheres to this material. It works really well. I'm going to kind of show you the almost like the little mini diorama kind of setup. See, they're not all they're all staggered and arranged so that they make sense, as it were. You can kind of see that. Again, you know, your little mini diorama and the top view again, so you can see that we don't have any uh, shields or these guys like going past the base. Uh, nice little tip there. I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. Right? I kind of staggered these guys so the, the throwing troops are in the front. And then I'll just go one by one. So I kind of like spot them with my eye, I grab the mini, glue him, put him back on, and with this guy, it's kind of my process. And then when we go back in with this glue, it's like a double whammy effect. So these guys aren't going to go nowhere. They're going to be very solid for years and years and years and years. Um, so whatever your storage solution that you use. And here I got these uh, Romans in the, behind the next row. Our static kind of standing, waiting for their chance to throw their javelins. Their pylum. Okay. Like so. Boom, it's that fast, and you're done. And I set these off to the side. We're going to get these guys ready to base. Make sure I've got you centered in the shot there, guys. You need to stay over here by the Habako. And I'm going to come in with my white glue, which is really wood glue. It's uh, off-white. I like it better like that. Go ahead and get our flocking material ready. So I'm going to go back on the shot and show you how we do this. So I'm coming in. You can come in from the top, you can come in from the sides, like such. Inject like doing it like an injection, and then <clears throat> take our guidance stick, which is basically a skewer, a barbecue skewer you use for doing shish kebabs. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to spread this. Start spreading this this glue down. All right. Make sure I get it up around the feet, up around the bases. basically what I do. And you see how this isn't runny like the white glue. So a lot of times I was finding the white glue literally like runs off of the <laughs> runs off of the base. You just need some more, just run and inject some more in there. That's the nice thing about these tips. You can get these on Amazon guys by the bag. They're really cheap. And I highly recommend. So we we'll go through. We'll make sure that glues all the way up to the edge. Like so. I'm trying a different technique today too. I'm going to put the flocking on and then when everything's good and dry and I'm satisfied with the flocking or the grass, static grass, I'm going to come back in at that point and I will 
I, I like to paint the sides of my thing like a grass color or like a you know I've been using Russian green lately you know, something that kind of matches the flocking a little bit and like so guys and if you find that this is a little too thick um, just put just a tiny bit of water but it is water soluble and um, just move forward from there so you get the idea guys I'm gonna work on this and then uh, I'll bring you back and we'll flock it all right got the glue down guys I'm gonna douse them. I'm gonna douse them. I'll take them and lock them. So I have to do it like this. Need to get me a bigger Tupperware container for these guys. These bigger bases. Shift them around. And see, this glue is not too runny, so it's uh, it stays put. And you'll find that when you do your flocking like this, um, you, know, you really don't have to build anything up around the base. I know a lot of guys use plaster of Paris or you know all that. There's uh, there's these ground textures. Those are perfectly fine to use. Um, obviously, um, just personal preference. I find this is a lot quicker and easier, especially if you're just going for a grass effect. Obviously you can use a sand mix, and I do have a sand mix here on the table. So I'm going to sprinkle this around, and then what I'll do is I'll let it sit like this. So I want this to set into the glue, right? I want this to set into the glue. And then once everybody's dry, I'll come back with a dusting brush, and I'll get all any loose flocking off of the troops. And make sure my edges look good and then um, I use an index card clean up any of the loose debris scrape it back in and that's how I'm rolling okay so that's dip one base done we'll pull this unit up they're ready to, they're dry and ready to be uh, glued and uh, we'll start the process all over again okay we got this one uh, this stands nice and dry a little bit of loose stuff still falling off. Let me tap it again. Get everything off. And then what I'll do is I'll inspect it. You see there will be a little bit of grass there by their base, but you can see it really does a good job of covering. There's really no unsettled areas around the bases. It fills it in really nice as you can see. But instead of going with grass all the time, what you can do, if you just have a few spots like that, which is really what I'm looking at, what I'll do is I will um, I will fill those spots with flowers, you know, and grass. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that a couple of these for you real quick. Uh, pulling tufts off. Um, I like to use my super glue to fix it. So let's uh, spin him around, and you'll see where I've got that thin spot right there. And maybe you can't see it. Um, we're going with our glue. Okay, looks like my glue glued itself. No problem. Go over here in my trusty tool bin and we'll get that off. Alright. Get my tweezers, get my static grass. Got my glue, put a dab, a dab on there. I'm going to go right in by his feet and put some static grass. And then, what I like to do with these flower tufts, I'll pull a tuft off and then take my Fiskars. You can get these at a lot of sewing shops, uh, Walmarts, you know, any of go over to where they sell the sewing supplies. And you always find these really nice, um, sharp sewing scissors. And I've had these for several years and they just work great. And we'll just come in and we'll clip these flowers into two. Let me 
try my clips. Sometimes my clips work better. Tear these apart. There's one sprig. There's two sprigs. So I'm just using my plastic sprues to pull these apart. Some of these can be tough. I think the purple ones I have are not that tough. So we will again go in with our tweezers, grab them, go in with our super glue, a nice dollop on there, and then I'll put these on the other side where it's gotten thin, and then repeat. And just keep doing that same thing. Sprig there. Let go. There you go. Perfect. Try to kind of stand them up. You don't want them laying over. Flowers don't lay down unless there's been a really bad thunderstorm. So. Now what I'm doing, since these are getting sticky, is i got to stand them up with another tool. I'm just using my X-Acto blade. I'll get another clump of flowers. Okay. Turn this around. Find maybe another thin spot by the base and the feet. Come in, goes right there. And some more static grass. So we'll take some more static grass. Like so. And we'll put this. I'm seeing a whole lot more bare spots, just a couple here and there. And then some more static grass. Grab some more. And again, this is another. Uh, creative process guys. It's really your own artistic license. Uh, put a clump right up in the front here. Like so. And then, you know, sky's the limits. You know, I can go out, I have two big long gravel driveways. I live out in the country. So I can easily go out and just gather some stones. Um, obviously we want just like a little small stone. Um, we can put in here. So, we'll go in with our super glue again. Because I do have some gravel in with this static grass, right? So it lends itself to being, you know, one of these Grecian, Romanesque, you know, Mediterranean areas that's got the kind of the gravelly soil. The uh, it's, I, overall, it's a poor soil, but uh, they grow grapes in it, right? So, and being in an agricultural business like I am, I can tell you the medium you can grow a plant in rocks as long as it's getting water and nutrients, right? So, uh, that's really the only caveat. <clears throat> now the other thing you can do too is just keeping some clump foliage. So I've got some, some like light green and then I have some dark green. So I think I'm gonna go with, uh, since the, the foliage I'm using is kind of a lighter green, or the static grass I mean, uh, I'm gonna go with a darker green clump foliage. So we can pop that open, and then just take a little sprig of this. Yeah, that's a good size right there. Looks like a little shrub, you know. I take my tweezers. I'll go in with some more super glue. And like I said, I've got sand, sand mix, a nice sand mix. I'm gonna kind of go in this back corner right here, kind of a empty spot. I'm going to affix that too. And you can see it starts to give your your uh, diorama more of a more interest. Again with a little clump of foliage. And maybe put that down up in here. Now, kind of the next thing I do in my process, I say, well, that, that's really starting to look good to me. I don't want to overdo it. But what I also need to do is um, put this away. Put 
these away. I will take my cleaning brush here, my dusting brush, and let's get in here and let's get any, because I'm getting ready to top coat these. And uh, I had to sprinkle the static grass from the top. So there's going to be a little bit of grass on their static grass on their sh shields, on their helmets, on their shoulder pads, shoulder armor. And that's all you need to do. Just dust it off. You're good to go. Tap, tap. Everything's holding on nice. We'll let that give a final dry. And then uh, we'll go over here to the airbrush station and then we're going to be hitting it with the micro flat. Now this is ready to go in your airbrush or you can brush it on with the brush if you don't have an airbrush. I highly recommend this stuff. It is a water-based um, top coat or sealing coat or protective coat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a clear finish. It is just like dull coat. So I got away from the aerosols as you guys know totally uh, a year or so ago and this is a water-based uh, clear coat that I highly recommend. It holds up really well. I've been really happy with it. It's not super cheap. A bottle like this is six to seven bucks, but it goes a long way. So I usually buy two or three bottles at a time. Um, so it's good. It really applies really well with an airbrush. I really like it. And then obviously from the top, you know, it's going to help seal this. Um, it's going to help seal this static grass. It's going to help seal the whole model. Um, you know, nothing really over the top, just really good tabletop standard. Now the one thing, last thing I will do before this goes to the paint, paint booth is I'm going to come in with my Russian uh, green and I will go around the base. Now what I did, typically I do that before I put my static grass on, but this time I just simply forgot. But typically before I do my static grass and my basing, I'll come over here to my paint desk and I will put down some paper towel and I'll start brushing on the outside edge with a color. You know, you can use black, flat black would be great. I've used flat black on, on, on my Kings of War armies. Um, you could use color, you could actually use red or blue if you're wanting to denote different types of troops so they're easy to identify on the table. I've done that with some of my Flames of War stuff, my 15 mil World War II um, I've done. so. Um, so we can go back here on the shot and that's as wide as it gets. Um, so yeah, that's basically what you're looking at for you new guys out there, you newbies just getting into the hobby. Um, this is kind of how, how, you, how you can roll. So you've got a lot of different options. Uh, there's no cookie cutter way to do everything. It's finding your own style and finding your own rhythm, so to speak, your own creative outlet um, to do things the way you want to do them. Thanks for watching today, guys. Remember, hit like, hit subscribe, hit share, and remember, be good. See ya.